Well, I guess I've been going over the stuff. I actually have been going through the stuff that we've recorded. Um, well, I guess just just uh, been been thinking about you know how this, the discussions have evolved over the past what I don't know six months. You know, starting at some sort of examination of uh, you know defining dharma uh, with all the problems inherent in doing that. Uh, and, and uh, of course, much less defining what we mean by defining secular dharma. Uh, and then, then we, I think, we, we then seem to move on to um, uh, towards, I don't know, maybe a secular dharma, which I think was felt a little bit better. And um, we, I think we spent a little bit of time with the concept of my dharma. Which are, at least for me revealed the, the problems of how an individual might arrive at, at a definition. And uh, I think that probably the last sort of phase that I could see was sort of a um, referral to creative dharma, um, which actually was discussed quite a lot in the third YouTube recording. Um, in, in particular, Elpid uh, referring to it. And anyway, after that, it seemed that uh, we got perhaps tripped off into the, into the, into the great matter of discourse, you know, the internet and uh, everything. And so, which is what I'd always afraid that would happen. <laughs> this is why I, I always avoid going there because I know it's not going to, to end. Um, um, so yeah, so at the moment I'm sort of, you know, my, I guess my, my overall focus, you know, apart from Dharma itself, is, is discourse. And these are, you know, interconnected things, but, uh, you know, one thing has to come before the other, is, is, I guess is what um, I'm feeling, which is why I didn't want to jump into discourse or, you know, modes of discourse. Um, so so my, my thoughts have been, been returning to, um, you know, creative dharma, you know, which which for me leads to you know my dharma because it is a, a creative dharma. It is you know my own creation, my own expression of that particular concept. Um, but you know, I think there's a danger of sort of saying, well, you know, I've defined my dharma and that's that, and and not seeing that it's actually just a process, you know, which could be you know spin and spin, and rinse and repeat indefinitely or several times and, and not ever again. So, you know, I'm sort of more seeing it as sort of a, an exercise in sharpening focus on, on those elements, which you know, we might call dharma, attempting to define them, failing in some cases, uh, because you know, there's an awful lot of fuzziness about, about the concept, but, you know, defining what can be defined. You know, that just because we can't define everything doesn't mean we can't define some things. Um, so, yeah, I think, yeah, I'm sort of going back a little bit and, you know, re, you know redoing my, my dharma um, using different structures or, or no structures at all and just seeing what happens. Um, and I'm finding it in most of this case, it's really a, a process of, of um, most of the, 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 the definition or the attempt at, at definition is mostly a matter of trying to identify or, or identifying my, my, most, my most basic assumptions um, about how I view or, or experience the world. So that, that's where I'm up to now. Wow. Does that mean anything? <laughs> uh, wow, it's an amazing kind of arc that you throw there. Incredible. <laughs> was it an accurate arc? Was it, did it re accurate well, reflect you more talked me less? through it, yeah. Okay, you're going to argue convinced. <laughs> <laughs> Flawed. <laughs> Talk oh. about convinced. <laughs> <laughs> I go bah. <laughs> I do a I do a Boris Johnson on you. Wah wah wah. <laughs> I've never had the opportunity to see that. 
<laughs> not watching much of that sort of that world of news. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm sort of back where no, not quite where we started, sort of somewhere else where we started, but nearby. Um, and uh, you know, just trying to, I guess you know, coming to the um, to a realization that you know, before you can actually define your dharma. Um, you know, to, however far you might want to do that, um, you you need to know where you where you're coming from. You know, what are all your assumptions? Because you know, I, I come to the Dharma with you no know, huge amounts of baggage. You know, I mean, I've ha had a you know, sixty three years of uh, living and an accumulation of experience and knowledge and, and all sorts of things, and uh, that has directed me in a particular direction at a particular pace and, and, and coming to a particular set of conclusions based on all that, that uh, uh, knowledge and experience. Um, which is not to say that, you know, what I might express as Dharma is canonically correct, but, but it is a, that stage of, of uh, um, you know, a realization of, of, um, of my Dharma. But what we're like is uh, going back to, to you know where is it coming from? You know, I'm finding that that's probably, in some cases, as important as as the the definition itself, because it basically defines yourself, uh, and and it defines yourself you know, not just as a as an individual, but as an individual interacting with uh, with many and various different groups, subgroups, subgroups, and whatever. So now that that's sort of I guess where I'm going at the moment, and, and quite interesting. I'm, I'm actually just, just started a new book um, called Blueprint. Actually, I'll just see if I can find it, um, which is about group theory, which I'm finding extremely helpful in 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 sort of thinking through a lot of these things. Um, only to you know because I think this over emphasis on individuality. Is, has uh, you know is, is quite prominent in in Buddhist practice. What we traditionally, or what we now think is Buddhist practice, it's it's very um, you know that there's certain what well, ways of thinking about certain things. Things are framed in, in particular ways, um, and 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 often in ways that are inappropriate or just simply not relevant or, or, or simply that have lost meaning through time, um, you know, through many different processes. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah, coming back again, uh, I, mean, I mean, this, uh, this, I was finding that book, wasn't I? Oh, one sec. Yeah. Okay, it's called uh, Blueprint, The Evolutionary Origins of a Good Society. Um, now, the whole, the title one is probably just a publisher's suggestion, but once again, but uh, I think it's, um, it's a, a very good uh, overview of current knowledge and group theory. And the fact that, you know, we can't just see ourselves as individual, like I was about to try and say that, you know, Buddhism tries, actually, I think, overemphasizes the the individual, or that's very necessary, uh, and underemphasizes the, the the interaction of the individual within groups and subgroups. Um, so I think this. Uh, I mean, I think I think I might have at one point asserted um, that you know there is really no individual. We can we do not exist as individuals. That is uh, simply uh, impossible as a human to be. You know, a lone individual. You know, we are, we are born as, uh, as social animals and uh, we are connected almost from birth uh, to, to groups and subgroups. So whether or not we remain men members of that group, you know, there is, there is always the memory of that group that keeps it connected, keeps the individual connected to, to a particular group. So I think it's really quite, you know, I think the, although, you know, like I said, the an examination of the individual might be you know, very important. 
um, it, it's it's really about the individual in relation to to others. That's I think uh, more to the heart of, of why Dharma is even necessary. But I was about to mention this book, wasn't I? It's called uh, Blueprint, The Evolutionary Origins of a Good Society. It's, it's, it's probably published, I think it was only a few months ago. Um, and uh, it's, I mean, I'm only halfway through it, but uh, even in the first two chapters, it, it sort of, I guess, you know, confirmed all my prejudices. And so on that basis, I, can, I, I consider it a good book. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> anyway, that's, that's about it for now. Well, I, I think that, you know, I, I agree with a lot of what you're saying. Um, in fact, everything. I... God, no. Um, I, well, I, I can't. Um, I think the, perhaps the, the difference from the way I think about things is, is, is that I'm not convinced that this is a, um, a, a process of um, revelation of going towards something. I'm sort of becoming increasingly convinced that it's the opposite. It's, it's, it's the, that what we are is okay and that what we have become is the problem. So that I've always had this problem with um, the Eightfold Path bit, which was how to live ethically and how you were supposed to learn a proper way of being and i couldn't really see that i couldn't really see that there could ever be a way that it could be laid down that this is the right way of doing things it just didn't make any sense um but it could be that, in fact, that we we just do that. Not n normally. That's just the way we are. We are we work in groups, as you say, and we are friendly, accommodating, and uh, sociable. And that's and we sort of just exist in in the Dharma. That's just how we are. But we learn very early on to adapt to different way of being, and that is to accommodate or to be accommodated into the culture and society which we which we grow in that we live in and that would suggest that the dharma isn't a thing it is just the way that we we be that we we would be if we didn't have the the accoutrements of of culture and society of this particular nature of culture and society and that, that, the last book that i was read that I, that I mentioned i don't know whether i put it on the um the group thing um which which some of which i didn't agree with but there were there were bits in that which i thought were very interesting which was to sort of suggest that actually if you went back far enough to the hunter-gatherer stage before we settled, then we were acted differently. And that everything that we do now is done pretty much because of the nature of the society and culture that we live in. So that as animals, as mammals, as apes, we are quite um, a, a, an amenable bunch. And we don't have all of the problems that have been created by civilization. But we don't, we don't see it that way. We just can't, or it's very difficult to see life that way. And through practice of things like mindfulness, meditation, um, the, the first three of the 
task skills, we can see that how it's avoidable, how it's, we don't have to see the world in this way. And I was thinking this morning about reactivity as the thing that created self, as I've just wrote briefly in, the, mm -hmm. in that thing, that actually, if, if, you, if you don't have react, if you don't react like a dog, there was a, there's this, there's this terrible joke, which I read, and I think I'd heard before, it's awful, but I'll tell you it anyway, because it, it's, a, it's a, just don't be offended, it's not my joke, okay? But if you lock your wife and your dog in the boot of your car for an hour, when you open the boot, which one is pleased to see you? <laughs> And the point is that humans react and you react against the person, but that's a, that's a reactivity and the dog doesn't react because the dog is not perceiving a second arrow, a reaction. It's, it's a, this is an unpleasant experience and now the experience is finished, but I don't have the second arrow. And it is the second arrow, which is the thing that creates or, or is certainly part of being the self. And I think that I'm just wondering now whether the, the more of the, the more we have reactivity, the more we have a self. And so the, the, the practices that we've been involved in and the practices in Buddhism and in, in the Dharma, which are to release the reactivity are things that diminish this the ego and the self and that though might be just getting back to where we we were more like other animals so maybe the dharma is like we used to be and we have learned to be in a different way and that's the problem so it's as i was saying it's an unlearning of stuff rather than the learning of the, the dharmic practices mm -hmm. but i've only just as uh, um, it's just sort of this is just the way i'm thinking at the moment and i'm not sure what, whether there's stuff yeah well this is uh, uh, an interesting and in some ways uh, dangerous area i mean you can take the view that you know we are, are we have you know innately you know being born with with you know, you know genetically or whatever you know pathways in our brain that sort of lend us to be sort of you know to to, to want to do the Elsa stuff you know, to, to to want to be in that particular frame of mind uh, with ourselves and with others, uh, but uh, you know not everybody's like that. I really don't believe that everybody is innately like that. I believe that perhaps only a, a, you know, a, a proportion of people are. And a proportion, there are a proportion of people whose, whose values are, and uh, outlooks are very, very different and take you know, far more aggressive forms. Uh, and you know, that is just part of the, the human soup, that, you know, that, that there are these Different trajectories. I mean, I wouldn't like to hazard a guess about how many there are, but you know, there, there are. There, there does seem to be certain, you know, innate pathways, and there, and there are probably more than one. And one of those just might be some sort of propensity to sort of uh, be, be open to to, to, to dharma outlooks, for example. Well, that's of course all pure speculation. Well, it's it's a difficult experiment to carry out because you would mm. have to take bunch of newborn babies and isolate them from mm -hmm. society um, for 20 30 years and see if they get on okay or <laughs> whether they develop into um, a bunch of fascists well and I think we know that they would <laughs> do that do what there, there, are, there, are, there are there are precedents things that have happened in, in history where you know, Babies have been sort of abandoned and managed to somehow survive into 
you know, uh, young childhood and even as teenagers, uh, completely desocialized and, and uh, a just blubbering mess, basically. You know, this is what I'm saying. The individual doesn't exist as a human. It cannot really exist. No, I'm not saying, I'm saying a group of, there would be, a, you'd have to take a group, oh. <laughs> not just I once. Guess. No, 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 you'd have to take a group of children. <laughs> This is even more ethically um, uh, problematic. Yeah. You know, it's yes. not just one child that you isolate. No, no, you have to take a bunch yeah. of them. Say you take yeah. 200 newborn babies and isolate them, but give them you know, on a, enough facilities to, to be able to survive. And then see if they develop uh, antisocial behavior or they act more like bonobos. And the the... There, the evidence in the book that I was reading was that, that actually that we act much more like bonobos, that we're much more sociable. And mm -hmm. that um, it is the other behaviours which we, we have learnt. And it's interesting to look at Trump and the book which is coming out by his niece, which is suggesting that Trump has learnt to be like Trump because of the behaviors of his family and particularly his father. Now, I don't know whether it's true, but it, it's, it sounds likely, it sounds quite believable that... But he would, he would have had to have a propensity to actually accept Well, that that's the, I'm not sure, you see. I, that, that's, the, that's where I would... It might be, and there might well be that there are people, that there are, you know, sociopaths are people who don't conform but i suspect that they're quite isolated that they're not i mean i haven't met many in my life you know I've met quite a few people and i you know people who you think are really a problem that there's no way they're, they're irredeemable you know they i just mm -hmm. it doesn't seem to me that there are many people like that there are many people i've met who i don't like but they have, it's because they have different views. And the views I think that are, are you know, I've, I've met racists. I've, you know, I know people who think that people of a different color are inferior to them. That's an entirely learnt behavior. Mm -hmm. that, that can't be innate. It, it wouldn't make mm -hmm. any sense. To be in it because we are all come from the same stock we are all the same species so it's a, it's a behavior that 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 has been learnt. so whilst i didn't like those people i can now understand that it is it is the nature of their background and their upbringing which created that personality that mm -hmm. self rather than there being an innate evil self if you like i've always had the problem with innate evil with it innate mm -hmm. but i think it's a, a again sociopath as i understand it is a lacking of things like empathy mm -hmm. and that's a you know that's a neurological problem and if that's the case then you can see yeah the, you know the, the, that's difficult to live with and so you probably have to have some facility for isolating um, that type of person, but but I suspect it, they're quite rare. I, I don't think they are that rare. I mean, <laughs> maybe, maybe I maybe I meet more of them living in Asia. You know, <laughs> all, sort, you get all sorts of pretty shady people coming out. Yeah, yeah well, that's an interesting perspective. <laughs> uh, Jack Carr is full of them. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, it, 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 it can, there are certain parts that you know, it, it really does attract the dregs of the earth. <laughs> so you've got, an, you've got this entire spectrum of people. <laughs> well, you but washed up there. <laughs> exactly. So you need to question, what the hell are you doing there? Um, well, I'm just consorting with the psychopath. And, and, you know, sort of, so Maybe right, Jakarta so, is, is how we've evolved in order to sort out psychopaths. Uh, Java, we Java just man. send them just, on the just, island. Just, just, yeah. just Java man, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd say you know a good uh, five ten percent of people have uh, you know some psycho uh, uh, sociopathic or psychopathic sort of inclinations, you know, some worse than others. 
but, but you know, when you come to people like Trump, who have, who have basically lost every single bit of empathy, and you can see it. And uh, and I've seen people like that before. It's a complete utter lack of empathy, and and that's I think could be Funnily such an ideological. It, it often goes alongside with very strong ethical or moral views, mm. you know, so that they are proclaimed without that ethical, uh, without the uh, empathy underlying it. And it can be then really quite monstrous because mm. there's all these, these things that get proclaimed, um, you know, principles and all that. But if you meet that person on a, uh, in, 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 a, in personal life, they're just monstrous you know, because they, mm. they kind of hit you with these ethics uh, whilst mm. acting completely sociopathically. Yeah. And I, I see that in families. I mean, I'm, I'm working with individuals and there are, there are individuals like that where it comes out as a coercive control often you know that, that that is the scenario yeah. behind it so there's a, there's an individual which lacks empathy in a big way but will draw on ethical principles forever and and really use that and and it's part of that uh, scheme where where the the other one the the suppressed one is kept in their place because there's all these moral and ethical principles that are getting um, uh, drawn out all the time and, 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 and uh, thrown out in, into the mix all the time, making that other person completely uh, confused uh, because there is this amazing person who uh, has such strong principles, so it can't possibly be that they treat me so badly. And the, the, so it, it's, uh, it's a real thing in, in personal relationships. Well, it means that the ethics are used as a, as a framework for control, and that's yeah. all. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is, if you talk to that uh, sociopath, they are not, it's not seen that they only used, I, I just used that to keep you down. No, yeah, that I'm, I'm, person really thinks that they mm -hmm. are acting like that and they are coming from mm -hmm. the right place and they're coming from a higher place than that mm -hmm. other person who just thinks about, you know, day-to-day -day things. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not, a, you, it, it's not uh, apparent to the sociopath necessarily that this is used as a manipulation mm -hmm. trick mm -hmm. they believe in it as much as as they mm -hmm. expect everyone to believe in it mm -hmm. anyway little side thing into more personal things is is that behavior innate or is it learnt? Mm. Or, or is innate behavior reinforced by learning uh. Well, it, it, I think that the, um, uh, a lack in empathy in real time. I'm not saying that they, that this, a, a person cannot afterwards reflect and uh, make better plans and go on a Dharma path or whatever. But uh, a, a spontaneous, um, empathic um, uh, response that might well be uh, something that we are capable of in our neuronal setup or not, in which case it would be innate. And I think, you know, the, 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 uh, you know how, if it's mirror neurons or not, I don't know, but mm -hmm. that kind of spontaneous uh, empathic feeling uh, that underlies uh, a real time meaning, you know, from moment to moment, uh, turning towards another in sympathy response. That seems to be either a quality that one has or one doesn't have. And it, obviously, it doesn't help if you don't have that. You get away for yourself with murder, literally. You know, it, it's... Um, so, I, I... But then... I see. I'm always interested, and in, I know Rupert that you are in that into that nature boy thing, you know. And I think mm -hmm. it's a really interesting nature way boy. that you bring that in. Absolutely, that we are kind of these innocent, you know, paradisical uh, beings, and then uh, culture sets upon us. 
Oh, I, I can't actually say how it could be any other way. Mm. Because we I are animals. Um... That's the point, that we are apes. We are apes. There's no getting away from it. So we are natural, like apes are natural. It just doesn't feel that way. But we well, I are see in that apes. way, apes are not natural either. They are similarly born into their culture. Yes, it's just that their and culture you cannot, is... So I think you cannot separate that cleanly. I, I well, do not think that there is a human being that is pure in that way, or that it would even be possible in with any experiment and any distraction. We are, we are just, we are in that culture and you cannot get it out of us. Uh, well, that's, I, well, I think I, I, I sort of disagree. Um, mm. I know you would, but that's, I, I think that's interesting. You know? It's not that it's, <laughs> I think the thing, I think that what the words we define as culture, I'm not sure you could say that a chimpanzee's or bonobos or gorillas have a culture. I don't I'll, think... I'll, I'll post an objection later, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. That I got word... Gary on my side, we're ganging <laughs> of up. Course, of course. <laughs> you could say that they have society, but I don't think you could say they have culture and I don't think you can have, say they have civilization. And I think those are the things that only uh, uh, Homo sapiens have developed. But I, if, 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 if chimpanzees are not natural, then the word is meaningless. The word natural becomes meaningless. If, if animals are not natural, and I, we're natural. It's a sort of, this is nature. It's just that there isn't, it's just that our nature is that we have other factors. And it is those factors which have influenced us. Those well, okay, well, I, I better take you up. Sorry, okay. you go. <laughs> go on, go on. Uh, uh, primates uh, do have cultures. I mean, they're not particularly sophisticated, uh, but, but they, they are very real and they, and they do reproduce themselves. Like, you know, a culture is just not a culture, it's just in one particular moment. Well, you, well, we have to have a definition of the word culture now. Well, if that's any sort of uh, generationally passed on knowledge um, or, or ways of doing things. So it's passed on, that it's passed on, for, uh, it, there's a process uh, of that, cultural yeah, well, production. Yeah, I would, for me, culture means a lot more than that. Uh, well, that's pretty broad. Um, I mean, it, it involves well, behavior it, in, in some ways, you know, modes of communication. It, it, it could also mean attitudes. There's been some good studies on baboons with, with that, uh, baboon trips with different cultures. Um, and, you know, there are significant differences in, the, in these groups. In terms of oh, the well, for me, you, you can't have culture without, for instance, having art. You couldn't have, you have to have literature, you have to have poetry, you have to have um, uh, sculpture, you have to have architecture, um, you have to have paintings. For, for me, the word, that's what the word culture involves, mm. that, that, that aspect. So, so we just have different definitions. That's all. So, mm. Uh, there's, so so what we, shall we call that higher culture? What about the word yeah. civilization? Because I think you can't. Yeah, civilization. Civilization you, is yeah. is is more encompassing. Yeah. Yeah. So so do chimpanzees have civilizations? No, they don't. No. Right. Well, let's okay. So we can use the word instead of culture. Just we we use the word civilization. So that that. Mm. So that would be my point, is that we're the only ones that have civilizations. Um, and mm -hmm. it is those civilizations that are, we haven't always had, and it is those that have created the, um, the, the veil, the, the, the a, a way of perceiving ourselves and the world which is different from that which we would have got if we hadn't got civilization 
it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not <laughs> sorry, but that is, that is Heidegger, you know, it, yeah, me, absolutely, you, 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 you cannot, you cannot take that civilization out of a human being, we would be nothing, we'd be a blob, you know, we would no, be I don't, but I don't think you, so, you can, you cannot, we, it doesn't even see, see the thing is so fundamental that things don't show they don't even we don't there isn't a thing and then you put civilization into it but it there is no thing without the civilization it's it's one thing it doesn't even show up for us we can't there's not us and then we look at it there is only looking and therefore, it, it's, the looking is already biased. It is innate in that way. You cannot uh, get it out of us. And all we can perhaps, um, when we are on, on, a, on a good development, all we can achieve is a bit more insight, a bit more choice. If we should just kind of uh, reactively uh, uh, respond to things, or if we get a bit more say in it and a bit more choice, like this or like that, you know, kinder or not so kind or what, that's that's what we can with lots of uh, hard work and and in in, in introspection and uh, uh, exposing ourselves to lots of other views and and that thing we can gather a little bit more of a broader view than just the one-way highway that we are uh, socialized into it. At the same time, there is no pure starting point when that happens. We, we are already in it when at, at the beginning. We, there is no first me and then civilization. No. It, there's no me without it. It's, and it is actually what you said, you know, is that self. Self is a development that is on that path. But they, it's, it's not that... Excuse me, I've got a call on. I think I better just take something. Okay. Oh, was that understandable? Yes, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay, rang off. Uh, yeah, but that, that, I think that's what I was saying, that there isn't a me, there isn't a me and then you have culture, and then you have civilization. That, that, is, that is how we have grown up, but we've only grown up because of the civilization. We've only, the, the reason we are the way we are is because of our civilization. And if it was a different civilization, we would be different. So. Yeah. From a an Heideggerian perspective, the, the way we are in the world is is a, as a result of ourselves in a civilization. It just doesn't have to be like that, because if we were in a different civilization, we would be different. So that's, I think, my my point, and I and I think that the the Heideggerian perspective of being in the world is one where the you can have insights into this as an understanding of our predicament of our position because i think that's what it allows you to do it allows you to be free from the the or for just for moments from the um from the cloak of uh, civilization and the, the cloak of meanness and self. So I, I don't disagree with what you're saying. I think it's just a different perspective. I, 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 I think that um, rather than the Dharma being something which you do in order to get somewhere, it's something that is already there, but we have an impediment. And it is removing of the impediment that allows the Dharma, which is already existing. That's what I think. It's not like learning another language. It's just, this is how we are. If we didn't have the impediment of our civilization, 
but I'm not saying it in any way that that, that, that we don't, we have an alternative to the civilization. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's uh, that looking at it from that perspective is a different way of looking at the same problem. I think. Mm -hmm. But I'm quite pleased to be a nature boy. I quite like that idea. <laughs> I've never really thought of myself as that before. I do like being outdoors, I realised. <laughs> you really do. And I do like looking at... And you look good in it. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like looking at, uh, at, at nature. I, I, I did, uh, I'm doing at the moment, the, the, a drawing, um, a sort of, what's it called? Uh, drawing meditation um, course which I think I've mentioned and yeah. and I called that drawing life as a sort of play on life drawing um, which is sort of what people artists do but drawing life and I realized actually it's the drawing life rather than drawing architecture for instance which is far more interesting ah. and I was sort of surprised I sort of think actually the more you draw living things or dying things or dead things they are much more interesting much more you you just get closer and more involved than you do if you're drawing manufactured things which don't have life unless they're very sort of old and falling down um or covered in in life but in a way that so it, it was i was it, i didn't mean it that way i didn't that's not why i called it drawing life but actually the more I did of it the more I realized that yes and that and that's what we do we draw draw things that are either living or have been living and are decaying but they're much more we feel much closer we can get much more involved in them than we can in uh, manufactured things which I just felt was interesting mm. life. I like that. Mm. Oh, you've stopped arguing with me. Huh? Oh, well, I'll pick up, when I do the recording, I'll oh, just, we can't I'll have just that. pick up all, all the things I've missed. All the things I've missed, I'll get back to you. Right. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I can't survive without oh. this. <laughs> Is that a course or are they standalone modules that you do there? Um, I do it every Sunday morning. Um, mm. And it, it's, it, I, I started off when I, at the end of the, the last um, meditation, uh, no, meditation, the last um, retreat I did at, um, down in Devon. And I stayed with uh, Chrissy down there and I was supposed to do a one-off day-long thing um, with their art center um, in Ashburton where Chris lives and of course couldn't do it because of COVID so it went online and we just it just started um, the Chris said why don't you try and do it online and I so I did and now there's about six of us who sort of regularly meet on a Sunday morning and I'm, I'm sort of running out of new things to do. And I was thinking about that today. And I think, well, actually, why, why do I have to do new things? This is just drawing. We can just draw. So it becomes more of a, this is using the things that, using these t different techniques. But it's interesting. Some of the people are very interesting. Um, and it's a sort of become a little sangha of, of but through drawing. Mm. And I, I try and spend a lot of the time just listening to, to their experiences and the ones where the experiences are similar to my experiences are very, it's, it's sort of very, um, it's invigorating uh, because you sort of think, ah, yeah, it's not just me, that, that there is something here, that there are ways of, of being, ways of seeing, ways of seeing that reflect, that reflect ways of being. and that are that are similar and they they 
and they are getting back to what we're saying about you know culture and, and civilization they are sort of beyond that they're beyond um the learning the learnt way we have of being in a civilization because they're by the nature of the way that we're doing the drawings all, all of those things have, have been taken away the the, the the, the fact that you look at your normally you would look at your drawing and, and that would be something that you you are judged by you judging yourself by how well you've done and you you're judged by others but if you don't look at it if you can't look at it all of that's gone and all you're allowed left all you're left with is you and the thing and it is and that interaction that looking that seeing and when you get involved in that that just becomes an experience, an experience without the uh, the cloak of of culture or civilization or whatever. And I think it's 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 those sorts of things why I think I'm sort of increasingly thinking the way I'm thinking about we can see the world, we can be in the world, in some instances, um, without this this barrier of civilization so when somebody says something and they because they've had a similar experience in the same way i think yeah that's that's interesting because these are not experiences you would have otherwise or it will be they're more they're more like insights into how the world could be all of the time although it would be quite tricky to be in maybe to know. To know. Well, well, I think you mentioned uh, in, your, in your notes uh, in WhatsApp about, um, I can't quite remember it now, about uh, reaction being necessary for learning or you know, reactivity being sort of, you know, part of learning um, or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, it occurred to me that, you know, that in terms of memory, at least, uh, I mean, memory is highly you know, dependent upon some sort of emotional response to to anchor the memory, to put it sort of very colloquially. Um, I mean, you can't actually memorize something without some having some sort of involvement of, from, from emotional centers in, in your brain. If you don't have that, that emotional involvement, you won't, you won't remember it. Um, and uh, I'm really good at forgetting things. And I, and I know it's because I don't have an, an emotional attachment to, to the thing that was told to me. And so you know, um, people always say, oh, you, why are you always forgetting? Now, I could say that it's, well, but I, it's probably because I don't care, uh, but that would be too blunt. Uh, <laughs> and it, but, it, but it is because, you know, my brain just doesn't attach to it. It just doesn't register that the emotional center just doesn't sort of say this is important or you must engage with this. It just doesn't do that and thus I just, it just becomes a non-memory. So, so I think in order to learn anything, there must be an emotional engagement uh, and reactivity is part of that. Uh, you know, the reactivity of you know, getting things wrong or, uh, or getting things right or, you know, all, all that's reactivity and all that is processed by, by our brain. And the more reactivity or the, or the more intense the, the experience of learning something or unlearning something, you know, the, the more likely it is to stay with you. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's that's true. I'm not. I think there are other ways of learning beyond having an emotional attachment. But I but I agree that that in general, we do mem we do have memories of emotional events or there is uh, something with an emotional attachment to us. And getting back to Trump, I would say that let's just assume that he, he wasn't a sociopath when he was born. That it, that his the actions of his father towards him and and his siblings um, were created a, a reactivity and created through that a lot of learned behavior and it is that behavior which we're seeing now the, the result of that uh, just you know it, it's a learned it's learned this is how i should behave i have learned how to behave because of uh, reactivity. Or this, we could also that, say that this behavior has been reinforced and that's the way yeah. I feel anyway, so I'm gonna go along with it. Well, we could, that, but, sort of... yeah, we could, we, but we don't, we don't know that. And, uh, and 
I, and it's, it's, it could be, yes. I mean, maybe he has a propensity towards that, but even... Well, his father did too. His, his father was um, not exactly, a, you know, a nice man either. Well, indeed, it all seems to stem from the, the, the father. So, so that sort of you know, indicates just, just maybe just a bit that, you know, that there may be some sort of innate, you yeah. know, well, maybe. genetic sort of involvement somewhere. Yeah, uh, even I'm not... not yeah. You know, I'm not denying that, and I, 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 I'm just thinking that. Anyway, no, well, I'll just have to say the same thing. Yeah, but, but, but I think if that same if that same father had not been a psychopath himself, and that that same father had sort of said, you know, you know, son, that's the wrong thing to do. You're not supposed to do that uh, because of this, because it's done, because people won't, you know, people won't like you, or, or you know, you you're, you won't make friends. No, you know, I guess a father is supposed to say that, you know, generally, but you, know, you, you get to get these, you know, and generally they do, as far as I know, uh, but you do get psychopaths that, that, that uh, you know, think that the, the best way to prepare their sons in particular is to, you know, is to be very hard on them. Uh, and I mean, there are degrees of that, and, you know, there is a logic in it. Uh, but then you come to some extreme where, you know, absolutely nothing matters except yourself. But it becomes just, you know, socially untenable for, for that sort of person to properly function uh, as, a, as, a, as a fellow human. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not this, disagreeing with you. I'm... Yeah, yeah no, no, but this is sort of, I guess, what I'm trying to express, that sort of idea. And the, and the idea, too, that, you know, psychopaths are probably very necessary um, parts of human society in, in, in the past, you know, that they, you know, evolution doesn't really make mistakes. Uh, you know, people exist the, the way they are because there might have been at some point in, in, in evolutionary history some sort of advantage. And, uh, and, and you know, in, in terms of uh, martial cultures in particular, you know, the, the psychopaths you know, often, you know, well, not, I won't say they're great leaders, but they are. They can lead people into some very, you know, bad places. And, uh, and, and as military leaders, they can be obviously extremely ruthless and completely without compassion. And, and those sorts of attributes that have had their roles in human history, uh, as much as we might not like it. Yeah, I'm not sure that's um, evolutionary. Um... Because uh, because the human history we're talking about is of an incredibly short period of time, and from you know where evolution. Well, I, I, mean, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, evolution if you, history, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that evolution works in lots of different ways, and it doesn't work work towards any end. And it works by um, there being differences from generation to generation, from generation to generation. Um, and those can work to the, the only way that they could be seen as being good or bad is if they survive. That's from a biological point of view. That re that's really all there is to it. Yeah. Did so that the, if they, did they survive, did they pass if, on their genes to the next generation? Yeah. Nothing yeah. more than that. Uh, exactly. You know, we have other like. We have other layers of you know, cultural evolution and technological evolution. But it, it doesn't, what I'm saying is it doesn't mean that they, that, that they would be, we, evolution is heading towards anything good. It is mm -hmm. only that yeah. these things are factors that have allowed those genes to be passed on. So you think, well, yeah, yeah okay, so some genes have been passed on, which are, you know, we probably would prefer they hadn't been. But there's nothing we can do about it. Well, but they might be con construed as being incompatible with the current technological age. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But that doesn't mean. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, the same the the same quality of not having to you know, for example, not being hampered by an automatic empathetic response um, 
doesn't necessarily lead to being a psychopath. It can be pretty insular because you, but, but in that insularity, there can be, there, it can be an absolute advantage of carving a new way of being, a new art, a new, uh, you know, you can, you can actually be much more um, uh, innovative if you're not linking in with everyone all the time. You, you, you kind of unleashed that a, a brain like that is, hasn't got as its highest priority to fit in. It has its highest priority to pursue its own interests. And mm -hmm. that can, that's absolutely necessary in evolution. So mm -hmm. that's why it hasn't died out. I, I think it's absolutely necessary that we have these people only uh, they work best when they are socialized into a way where they can, you know, are not destructive to their surrounding. But every now and then it happens that they're not socialized that way. Mm. Most likely because the, the direct family suffers the same trait. And therefore there is there's a, a dysfunctional um, uh, upbringing there, uh, well, mm -hmm. that is part of the whole thing. And if that mm -hmm. happens, you, that, that it goes unnoticed that this, this young individual is not getting socialized with its, with its particular brain and therefore is going into sociopathic behavior. Then you get a Trump. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, but that same feature might have been going into being an amazing uh, innovative politician, artist, uh, um, engineer, whatever it is, dreaming out, totally outside the box. And I think those, um, those people are, are much more around, and thank God, they're amazing, um, when they don't do harm, but we get the benefit of their innovative thinking. And um, so, that, but every now and then we have a we have one of these unfortunate combinations that might bring on uh, real big big problems. You know, then 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 you get Trump and Hitler and and Stalin and all also those people um, because they they but they are outliers. But then we couldn't we couldn't there wouldn't be as much. Um, development and innovation and uh, drive in human development without those brains. I, mm -hmm. I think we, we just, they are, you know, we have to put up with those outliers and somehow get better at holding them in, in some way. But they, they, that's why it hasn't in, been eradicated. Evolutionary, the, these, these uh, traits are, are very important, I think. Well, I think you've got to recognize the trait first so that uh, you know, people like that can be socialized. Like, I, yeah. I guess there's, there's, there's no emphasis anywhere in the world that I can, that I know, trying to identify you know, potentially problematic people who might appear quite normal in, that, in most other respects. Uh, so, you know, and, and identifying you know, both, well, recognizing those innate capabilities that have, that have potential to go off the rails if they're, if they're not uh, properly or, or not properly socialized but socialized to the extent that they don't cause themselves or others harm mm. so, so but to, you know nobody even wants to look at that it's just too confronting to, to sort of have to sort of you know examine someone and sort of say you know, are you a psychopath or not if you're a psychopath we're going to take you to the re-education re camp you know it, it it's a it's a problem so mm. and i mean and of course psychopathy is just one of many different uh, you know um innate sort of uh behaviors and outputs that we could probably talk about it's just i guess the, the psychopaths stand out because of the of the you know, potential destructive natures yeah yeah, we we get to know about those, but mm -hmm. it, it, that it is all around us, and 
and being such a drive for development and and such a uh, you know such a, a great good um, for 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 societies that's overlooked and I think there's mm. it's just how do we how indeed are are these people socialized and so that they can really um, offer their their um, talents for the good mm -hmm. of society um, and and really get something out of it without being destructive and mm -hmm. then what's not to like you know it's it's really very fruitful mm -hmm. Hmm. I think I, I'm going to have to get moving. So if you want to continue on, I've got a, a meeting in a 15 minutes ago to prepare for. Okay. I, I just I, I just wanted to sort of, I mentioned that I, I've, we've got a few recordings that I haven't been posted yet. And I, I've sort of got an intention of doing that if, if, uh, if Rupert doesn't. So, um, yeah. Even though the public, some of them, I guess, aren't talking directly about topics relating to you know, secular dharma. Um, I think you know, we're, talk, we're talking a lot about technology and other things, but I still still think they're quite relevant because they're basically painting a, a background of you know what is we're talking about and, and in what times we're talking about. Um, you know, so I, th I think that I had a bit of a listen to some of the. The last two that you know we we recorded, I think that there's there's some valuable thoughts in there. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm that, quite. I've got a bit of time now, so I can oh so do some editing. Well, I'm back in <laughs> I'm back in the UK and I'm back with my computers and stuff, so I can I can great. do it. So, but well, I just I don't know where you remind me where they are. They, they're in the cloud oh, somewhere. Oh, they're in the cloud, and I've downloaded them anyway, just oh, right. from on my own machine, uh, just to make sure I don't lose them. Because I've only got so much space on, right. on uh, Zoom before they delete them. So okay. pretty big files, obviously. Yeah. yeah one, 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 way now, one way or another, I can get them to you. Okay, right. Well, if you, you know, either transfer-wise or something, if you, whatever, if you send them to me or let me uh, have the links. Well, what, what, probably the easiest way to do it would be to I'll put it on one of my websites, I'll give you a, a link address, All right. okay. and then you can just download it. Yeah. So there's a lot of mucking about um, okay. in between. Sure. Okay, I, I've, I've got to get moving. Okay, okay. All right. All right. Good great to see you. To see you. Okay. Great to see you. Okay then, yeah, see and then. next week, is, it, is yeah. Wednesday better than Monday or? For me, it that makes no difference. But uh, I, it's pref such, such, I think I prefer else. Wednesday at the moment. Okay, yeah. well, I think Julie said normally Wednesday was good. Maybe she could come as well. So, yeah, next Wednesday okay. then. Great. Okay. 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 Cool. Bye then. Bye bye. Bye. bye.